I don't think that a horror game has to do much to be considered good. It was fun to play, has some good scares, and a decent enough story. It can overall be a fun and engaging experience. But Evil Inside does the bare minimum and homages so much that you're left wanting to play the inspiration rather than the product. But instead of writing a 30 page review on a 30 minute game, I thought I would just list off a couple reasons why Evil Inside misses the mark. So let's start with number 4. Number 4. The story makes no sense. The story of Evil Inside is pretty simple, and despite its simplicity, it makes no sense. The story is that you play as Mark, a teenager whose mother was murdered by his father, leaving Mark and his big brother Jackie alone at their home. Months later, Mark decides to contact his mother from the spirit world using an Ouija board, but during the summoning process it breaks into pieces. After Mark collects all the pieces of the board, he leaves his house and is transported to the well where his mom died. His mom then reveals that Mark was the one that killed her and his dad took the fall for the murder so for Mark's punishment, he gets thrown down the well and falls for eternity or something. This story makes no sense because if Mark was the one that killed her, why would he summon his mom from the spirit world? And why throughout the game he's confused as to why his mom is vengeful? Mark's mom at one point throws a clown at him which is apparently Mark's biggest fear and he has the balls to ask. Only my mom knows that I'm scared of circuses. Why is she doing it? What makes even less sense is the inclusion of Mark's baby brother Jackie. Jackie? The game states that Mark has to take care of his baby brother, which means that the baby is alive. So, why does the game act like the baby is dead? Why have that piece of dialogue to then show that same baby being hung minutes later? And if you're thinking, well, it's an evil spirit, so it's evil, I'd be inclined to agree with you, but throughout the game, Mark's mom is seen as a vengeful spirit that's coming after Mark and Mark only. She's mad that her husband is imprisoned for her murder, which is more complex than just a demon that's taken the form of his mom. So with that in mind, it makes no sense as to why she would even use her own baby as a weapon against Mark. And then you'd say, maybe Mark loves his brother, so it's just a mess with him. I'd also be inclined to agree with you if it wasn't for the fact that Mark doesn't react to seeing his baby brother being hung. So with all of that in mind, it just felt like the developers just wanted an excuse to reject some shock horror and it's fucking gross when it's just being used because a baby's there. The scares are tied to the story and when the story makes no sense, then the scares make no sense, which ties into my next point. My mom's camera, what's that doing here? Number 3. The scares make no sense. While the events of the game happened months after the murder of his mom, the game doesn't seem to imply or outright state that Mark has amnesia, so all the scares which are meant to torment Mark make no sense in the context of the story. Sure, you'll jump at the jump scares, so at least the game's attempting to be scary, but this game probably has the worst jump scare in gaming history, and instead of boring you with the details, I'll just show it to you and um, ignore the controller warning. Get it! 
there's another scare where ice show up in the walls and where you look into a crack in the wall and get transported to the well. Though that sequence doesn't do much but to break the monotony of going through the same room over and over again, which ties into... What the fuck? Was it a flashback? Number 2. The game is boring and it doesn't work. I've spent most of this video talking about the story and the scares around the story, but is the game in this game worth the trouble? No. So what are you doing in this game? Well, 1. You walk around the house. 2. A door, puzzle, or something goes wrong. 3. You do a thing, and then the spooky happens. Do you remember this well? 4. The door at the end of the hallway opens. 5. You then grab a piece of the board and enter the other door that opened up. 6. You are then transported to the beginning of the hallway, rinse and repeat. The one puzzle in the game is just looking at a picture and deciphering the number combination for a little box to then get a key to go upstairs. Nothing that crazy, but at least you get a trophy. Hmm. Master of Unlocking. I would rather you play Resident Evil Village right now. The other instances of something going wrong are 1. Your flashlight runs out of battery 2. You're transported to another place 3. The furniture is blocking your way 4. Woman kills you 5. You're transported to the mirror dimension And my all-time favorite, the cross turning upside down Which is meant to imply that things are serious now when you've been haunted this entire time. So was a giant baby head not serious? What doesn't work about the game is the fact that the game just doesn't work. What does that mean? Well, that means that when you're exploring the hallway to trigger another event, there's no fluid nature about these events and these triggers only happen when the game wants to. Meaning that there are times where you're walking around this hallway for periods of time without any direction on what to do next. According to HowLongToBe.com, the game lasts a full hour, but my recorded footage goes to only a half an hour. Which means that the hour is just you walking around with no idea of what to do. What makes it worse is that when you actually pass on to the next round, there's a noticeable lag which ruins the immersive factor. You're supposed to feel like you're going insane, going through the same room over and over again, but that illusion is shattered after each round. So at this point, you just gotta say you're sorry to your wallet for spending the $14 to play this game. I'm reviewing the PS4 version, but the Steam release had a prologue chapter that I'm omitting from this review. Why? Well, if the developers thought it was important, it would have been in the PS4 and PS5 version, so I'm reviewing the game as it is. And yes, you heard me, there is a PS5 version, and no, I am not showing a side-by-side -side comparison. But it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Number 1. This is a ripoff of PT. P.T. is probably one of the most influential horror games of all time, and while we'll never see the full release of Silent Hills, P.T. was a demo for Silent Hills, it didn't stop any developers from making a rip of the game, and this is probably the most egregious case of it. The house is similar to the P.T. house, some of the sequences are the same.
the mechanics are the same, and it even copies a puzzle from Layers of Fear, which is another PT clone. I can understand why this got released on Steam, and that is because anything can get released on Steam. But it's weird that it saw release on the PlayStation 4 and 5 store. There's even a trailer for this game on the official PlayStation YouTube channel, which is once again weird. Sony went out of their way to scrub PT from their online store to the point where scalpers are selling PS4s with the game installed for hundreds of dollars to then have a ripoff on their store and promote it on their YouTube page. And you can often look past these ripoffs because they have something that sets them aside from the original, but nothing about this game screams originality or something that PT didn't do better. It irks me that not only did I get duped into paying money for a ripoff, but that the game is boring, lazy, and headache inducing. Evil Inside gets a 1 out of 5. Look, the game doesn't look horrible, and actually looks pretty good for a game with a small budget, but that's all the positivity I can muster for this piece of shovelware garbage. But that ends my review on Evil Inside. Thanks for watching, and I want to give special thanks to my patrons, Leo Karen Hachi, and for $1 a month, your name can show up right here. Love you guys and Shalomu. I need batteries for my lantern.